Uh, Coach Castellito, thank you for joining me today. Uh, Coach Castellito is the outside linebackers coach at Central Connecticut State University. Uh, coach, for people who don't know who you are, can you kind of give a little bit of background about yourself, please? Yeah, so uh, again, you know, my name is Joe Castellito. Um, currently the outside linebackers coach at Central Connecticut State University. But prior to that, um, I played at Utica College, uh, played there for four years, played a whole bunch of different uh, positions for Coach Will Pluff and, you know, Coach Fagiano. And then um, I was fortunate enough they actually allowed me to coach there. Um, I was a graduate assistant there for two years and, uh, well, two seasons. And I coached the inside linebackers. And then uh, after Utica College, I moved on. I went to Western Connecticut State University for just about spring ball. So it was about a month and a half to two months, so a cup of coffee. And then uh, I was fortunate enough to get interviewed and got the job at Central Connecticut. Awesome, so. Coach. Um, you mentioned Utica College there. Um, how, how did playing and coaching at Utica uh, prepare you for your current job? I mean, like you said, you had the opportunity to play and coach for Coach uh, Blaze and Pluff. Um, how would you see that kind of prepared you for where you're at now? Yeah, I mean, I, sp I spend a lot of time because I just went up there and I saw those guys this past week, so I had some time to reflect on this. But um, it was cool. It was, you know, Utica College is definitely a unique place. Um, you know, when I got recruited out of high school from there, um, by coach Riley Hill, um, you know, my buddy was already playing up there who coaches at Fordham, James Lenahan. And, you know, I went up there and it, coach Fagiano does a really good job with culture at Utica college. You know, they were on the brink of winning the, the conference championship the year prior I came. And then while I got there, you know, we went to two bowl games and, uh, which was the first two in school history. And then when I coached there, um, you know, we won our first bowl game, which was awesome. But, you know, being a Division three graduate assistant is such a unique job because you don't make a lot of money, but you wear a tremendous amount of hats. So while I was there, you know, I was the equipment manager. I was the um, strength and conditioning coach. I was the assistant recruiting coordinator. So you wear all these hats and you have to do all these different things, but you kind of learn that no jobs too small, no jobs really too big. Um, and when I look at what my job is now, you know, I watch a lot of film and I do a lot of football and I don't have to do all the extra, you know, the auxiliary stuff. Cause we have people for that on staff, but I'll find myself cleaning the staff table before we have staff meetings or, you know, if there's something, some crumbs on the floor, I'll end up wipe, you know, uh, sweeping the floor up and things like that. Those are just like little things that are expected out of you um, when you coach at Utica College. Um, just wearing all those hats and having to do all those responsibilities, um, I think, you know, prepares you better, um, you know, for coaching than probably anything else. And kind of continue with that, you, I mean, you've had experience coaching inside and outside backers um, at the variety of places you've been. Um, what what would advice would you give to coaches t taking over a linebacker job for the first time or kind of entering their first year of coaching? Yeah, I mean, aside from you know drills and all that kind of good stuff, my biggest thing is you got you got to have energy. You got to get juiced up because um, if you bring energy, your players are going to have energy. Um, and to follow that is just preparation and being prepared for indie making sure you're writing down your indie every day, making sure it's specified to what you want, what you want that week. Energy is probably the most important thing, in my opinion, because um, if you get juiced up, your players will get juiced up. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I would just say energy and preparation, in my opinion, those two big things. Awesome, Coach. And kind of, kind of next I want to kind of start going on to actual football program stuff. Um, kind of the first thing, and I'm kind of curious about this, and I uh, asked quite a few different coaches this this offseason, what are your responsibilities on game day? Where are you in charge of looking at? What where, 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 where is your game day role that you're assigned by your coordinator? Yeah, so I'm on the field game day. Um, so we have a cool setup. Our DC's in the box with our corners coach. And then myself, the safeties coach, and the defensive line coach are on the field. Um, excuse me. So I am the signaler alongside with the safeties coach. So I signal in the plays um, each play. 
And then my main responsibility is to watch the four linebackers. So it would be the two inside guys and then my two outside guys. And I really harp on, um, you know, run fits and things like that and communication when they come off the sideline. So if my DC wants to communicate to the linebackers, he speaks to me and I speak to the linebackers. If I see something on the field, you know, I'm the next guy in line uh, for communication when it comes to those four guys. And then we really break it up. The D-line coach speaks to the D-line. Safety's coach obviously speaks to the secondary. Um, and then lately, the ongoing joke is that I'm the uh, assistant defense coordinator because I called one play during the game because uh, my DC wanted to come down from the box. I think it was right before the end of the game, so he allowed me to call one play. So they jokingly call me the assistant defense coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> There's worse things to be called, coach. No, um, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, hey, hey. One for one, we had a tackle for loss. I mean, it was a base play, but I called it. Hey, you can retire right there, coach. That's a, that's a I good should. <laughs> um, now, kind of uh, continuing on on field stuff. Um, what drills do you focus on? Like, what are your everyday drills? Like, I I know obviously drills will kind of vary depending on what you need to get done today. But is there anything that you have to get done every day that is like, no matter what, we have to work on this skill or this fundamental? Sure. So. I, I have such a unique um, position in coaching because I coach the field side linebacker who's like a rover, so he's a hybrid. And then I coach our weak side outside linebacker who's essentially like a stand-up defensive end. So trying to get our individual period um, to correlate to things that both those guys do, I really had to sit down and, and break it down. So, you know, when I went through the season and I was watching some tape of my own, the biggest thing, and I do this in every single drill, no matter what, is where our eyes are at. I don't care, as simple as that sounds, where your eyes are to start the play on your key and then transitioning your eyes to your new key, right? So if we're reading the end man the line of scrimmage, right, and we're just doing a simple read drill and I want my guys to fit down into the C gap, they're staring at their key, they see the read key, they get to the C gap and then they're transitioning their eyes either down the line of scrimmage or at the mesh. Um, so honestly getting your eyes to the right spot is more so, uh, for me, the most important thing for my guys. Cause listen, they have all the athletic ability in the world. Um, and we drill a lot of technique, but eyes come first more so than anything. That's the first thing that we do, um, every single day I'll be the key. And then my guys will read off of me and they'll fit off of me. Um, the next thing is, you know, hand placement. So block destruction stuff. So where we're placing our hands um, and where our hips and our feet are being placed on each play as well. Um, right. So if we're getting a run block and they block down, getting our hands right onto that shoulder or that near breastplate of that tackle or whoever it is, or if my rover is getting into a pass drop where his hands and his hip position is on the receiver to collision and make contact. So definitely eyes and, you know, hand placement and definitely foot and um, hip placement as well. Um, and then pursuit. I think pursuit is, you know, something that we drill a lot as a defense overall, but, you know, you never want your guys to get cut back on. And those are things that really extends plays and how to track a runner. It might sound so simple, but really playing to that near hip and bending off that back hip um, so you don't get cut back on. Um, those are probably the three of the biggest things that I work um, okay. in individual periods for sure. Okay, Coach. Um, and then kind of last thing before we start wrapping up is, um, and I'm, this is another th big curiosity of me this offseason, is how often do you guys practice special situations, and what situations of those do you focus on? Is it red zone, goal line, two-minute, four-minute, like on the, ha on the hash, this play to the field, mm -hmm. like – what, what, what situations do you guys practice the most? Um, and, it, and then how often do you guys do it? Yeah, so, you know, our philosophy as a defense, which I really enjoy, is to have our players understand our defense to the full capacity and how to adjust to different offensive looks, right? Because at the end of the day, if they know our defense inside and out, you can throw any formation at us and they'll just adjust to it, right? So for us, what we drill probably more so than anything is we do a lot of formations on bags and then we'll do um, 
I think our biggest one that we do is probably a third down period. So we'll do a third and short, third and medium, and then a third and long. So situationally, they know, you know, what are the team's tendencies in third and short? What are the team's tendencies third and medium? What are they doing in third and long? And what are we going to run in those types of situations? So they see that and they feel that throughout the week and they understand, hey, it's going to be third and long. We're going to run, you know, this coverage. Um, so mentally in the game, they're almost prepared for that in that sense. But we'll do some two-minute stuff. We'll do some four-minute stuff. We'll have us backed up. Um, we'll go against our offense. We'll do some good on good. Um, but I think third down for us is probably the thing that's most harped on is just getting off the field, right? As a defensive coach, you just want to get off the football field. So third down for sure. Awesome, Coach. And then kind of as we wrap up here, do you have any final thoughts on anything we talked about or did not talk about? Kind of the, the floor is yours, Coach. Uh, you know, I think when I really reflect on it as coaching as a whole, I think we're in such a, a cool and unique place, especially with all these things going on in the world. You know, football is so black and white. Like, it's crystal clear um, – what it is and how truthful football is to you. If you put in the work, you get in what, um, you get what you put in. Um, So, you know, for coaching, you put in a lot of work into scheme and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna get um, what you want on game day. But I couldn't be more appreciative of, you know, you having me on here and I could definitely not be more appreciative of, you know, the coaches that have influenced me, that I've gotten to work for. that I've gotten to play with um, and like ones that I've definitely got to coach against as well. Cause in this profession, I think it's so cool because the bar for learning is ever so high, you know, and you look at you doing all these clinics and whatnot. And, you know, I was going through them and I was watching some of these people. You can always learn from somebody in football, whether that is football or whether that's philosophy or, you know, you name it, doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. So, um, it's a never ending learning profession for sure. So that's can, it for me. I couldn't agree more coach. And I thank you. I wish you and your family safety and health. And I wish you luck this season. Of course you too, coach. Thank you. Thank you, sir.